Hi, the SI Meteorologist Paul Dorian here on Sunday, March 24th, a special Sunday video. We have a storm coming into the Mid Atlantic region for tonight and tomorrow that should dump some uh, accumulating snow on the Mid Atlantic region, perhaps the biggest snow event of the season and maybe even for the past couple of years in parts of the I 95 corridor, especially to the north and west of I 95, where several inches of snow can accumulate on Monday. Here's the latest radar loop for the Penn State Ewald site. Snow falling now over the Ohio Valley. We talked about a couple of different lows for this upcoming event. The first low, a primary low, is headed into the Ohio Valley. Meanwhile, there's a secondary low that will form off the Mid-Atlantic coast later tonight and tomorrow. This first low will uh, spread precipitation all the way into the Mid-Atlantic region by tonight. But then the coastal low will take over tomorrow. And it really could come down hard for a while in the form of snow in much of the Mid-Atlantic region, let's say from the... Uh, mid-morning hours into the mid-afternoon hours after this coastal low takes over. Some snow is breaking out right now across the uh, western part of Virginia, the higher elevation locations. Precipitation should reach D.C. later today, overnight in Philadelphia, and by morning across the New York City region. Well, here's the current surface map. Again, we have that primary low basically here over the Tennessee Valley, headed up towards the Ohio Valley. It'll kind of grind to a halt. We've talked all week about a uh, blocking pattern over eastern Canada that will prevent this storm from going any farther north than, let's say, the Ohio Valley. At that point in time, a coastal storm will uh, intensify along the coast. The energy will transfer from this primary low to a mid-Atlantic coastal low by the time tomorrow morning rolls around. And then this will become the dominant feature right here, a, a mid-Atlantic coastal low that will slowly pull off to the east northeast over the next 24 to 48 hours or so it looks like it'll spare boston and portland with significant precipitation but basically anywhere from new york and long island on down to the delmarva peninsula into the dc region uh, those areas will get hit pretty hard by this developing coastal storm later tonight through the day on monday well one of the reasons we expect this mid-atlantic storm to become quite a strong storm intensifying rapidly during the day tomorrow as it has very strong upper level support. This is the forecast map for tomorrow morning, about 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. The upper level feature here, quite impressive. A lot of dynamics with this, and that's important in this particular situation. It's not really a strong cold high pressure system for this particular storm. You usually need that for snow in the mid-Atlantic region. However, when you have tremendous upper level motion with strong dynamics in the upper part of the atmosphere, you can compensate for that lack of cold air, uh, at least initially. And when the precipitation comes down hard tomorrow, it should be in the form of snow. And we'll talk a little bit more about why I believe it'll be a mainly a snow event for those locations north and west of I-95 in a couple of minutes. But again, a key feature is very strong upper level energy here that'll contribute to the cooling in the upper part of the atmosphere that will in turn contribute to the snowfall that I expect tomorrow in much of the mid-Atlantic. Well, that last chart was the 500 millibar fi uh, upper level vorticity, and not surprisingly, with such a strong upper level low, you have a very strong upper level jet streak. This is, again, the forecast map for tomorrow morning, Monday morning, and it's got jet streak of over 130 knots here, contributing to the, all that upper motion that will uh, produce the heavy snowfall in this region, the mid-Atlantic region, on the left side of that upper level jet streak as it continues to move to the east-northeast. Tremendous support is the bottom line for this developing storm in the upper part of the atmosphere with strong vorticity and a very strong upper level jet stream. Well, let's walk through the latest GFS model run. This is a 12Z model run for this evening. At that time, we had this Ohio Valley low continuing to dump some heavy precip over the Ohio Valley, developing coastal low right here, and precipitation moving into the D.C. area again later today. And then in the evening hours across Philadelphia, probably late tonight in the New York City region. Let's now jump ahead. Here's the GFS forecast map for just after midnight. Still the dominant low is the Ohio Valley low. Precipitation moving into the uh, southeastern part of Pennsylvania later on this evening. Developing coastal low at this point. But again, the dominant low by this time is still the Ohio Valley low. Let's now jump ahead. Here's the forecast map for late tonight. Still the dominant low out here over the Ohio, Ohio Valley. Notice precipitation actually kind of slackens off a bit here. And this is 
when the, the uh, transfer is starting to take place here, the initial burst of precipitation is kind of associated with the Ohio Valley low, but then by late tonight, the transfer will start occurring. We'll see uh, much uh, development of precipitation beyond this time frame uh, along the coast, and that is when the coastal low takes over, and uh, we'll jump ahead now. to uh, 8 o'clock tomorrow morning now. This is uh, 12Z on Monday, and by this time the coastal low is starting to take over here. Precipitation suddenly intensifies here in the uh, I-95 corridor across D.C. and into southeastern Pennsylvania, and it really starts coming down hard, it looks like, later on in the morning into the mid uh, part of the afternoon. It'll be a thumping here. Here's the forecast map for tomorrow afternoon, 18 Z about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, a, a real impressive, what's called a, a, a cold conveyor, conveyor belt on the north and west side of this low is starting to take shape. The NAM model has really emphasized this CCB or cold conveyor belt, and that's where the really good snows will fall. Now the GFS model is also insinuating such a development here. Let's jump ahead after this time. And here's the forecast map for late in the afternoon. Again, notice that. Nice conveyor belt here back on the northwest and west side of this low. This will be very hard snow falling at this time. Again, from about mid-morning through mid-afternoon, it looks like the snow will really come down hard and cross southeastern Pennsylvania, most of New Jersey, even as far back as uh, the D.C. region, the northern Maryland, northern Virginia, in the cold conveyor belt. Should be primarily in the form of snow. Well, certainly sleet and rain can mix in at just about any time here as this storm continues to move to the east-northeast. It'll intensify. Winds will pick up, and the snow will be of the heavy, wet variety. So the com combination of the heavy, wet snow with strong and intensifying northeast winds cer could certainly lead to some power outages, let's say, uh, from Long Island down to the Delmarva Peninsula anytime later tomorrow into tomorrow night. The fact that this is moving East northeast kind of spares Boston and Portland. It will not ride up the New England coastline. The last thing I'd like to show is a couple of short range ensemble forecasts from the Penn State EWAL site. This is a, uh, a useful tool to use when you're this close to the event time. It kind of combines several different models with several different uh, initial conditions put into each model. So you have a variety of initial conditions for a variety of models. And this is the mean of all of those models, all those ensemble runs. And this happens to be the uh, precipitation uh, critical thickness that will play a crucial role in the precipitation type. This happens to be for tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock in the morning. All of these lines right here represent the critical thickness values in the upper part of the atmosphere. Notice all to the south and east of D.C., Philly, and New York. In other words, this is kind of a pretty good indication that It'll be in the form of snow, whatever precipitation falls at this time, despite the fact that the surface freezing line is a little bit to the north and west of the I-95 corridor. But again, the, the short-range ensemble forecast, SREEF, I think is um, uh, quite suggestive that much of the precipitation will indeed be in the form of snow along the I-95 corridor and points to the north and west. In fact, if you look at some of these individual members, and there's about 21 of them that show up here, the blues represent snow, and just about all of these have big cities in snow at this time by tomorrow morning. And one last SREF map to show here, and that's this probability of precipitation uh, type, and this is snow over here. And anywhere where you see the pinks, this is about 95% probability of snow and above virtually all of the area of uh, I-95 north and west. Here's the D.C. region. Here's Chester County, Bucks County. Uh, virtually 90% or above everywhere from I-95 north and west in the form of snow here, according to the very latest SREF. This is from the 9Z model run for the short-range ensemble forecasting, both of these from the Penn State EWAL site. So right now, it looks like a significant snow event for the, much of the Mid-Atlantic region. I'm thinking perhaps one to four inches in the cities of D.C., Philly, and New York City, and points south and east all the way to the coastline, and perhaps four to eight inches in the northern and western suburbs outside the Beltway across D.C., and Bucks, Montgomery, Chester County in the Philadelphia region, and maybe uh, the northwestern part of New Jersey, lower Hudson Valley near New York City. Again, 
A significant snowfall is likely on Monday with 4 to 8 inches in the northern or western suburbs, a good bet. But stay tuned to the SIweather.com for updates. This is a complex storm. That's it for now. I'm the SI meteorologist, Paul Dorian.